Hey everyone, my name is Jamie. Welcome to Control Freak, a show where we do a deep dive into the controls and the user experience of some of our favorite games. Today we're going to be looking at Doom Eternal on the Switch. Now, I play a lot of Doom. Um, the Doom 1 and Doom 2 ports that have come out for the Switch and other platforms are just amazing. They did such a good job converting it to the Unity engine, getting it to run at 60 frames per second, true widescreen, um, and then they just have these add-on packs so that the game just continues to grow and grow like it did back in the day when people would just make content for it. Only now you can get it on your home console. And uh, one of the biggest things that they did was add gyro control to Classic Doom. And I was asking for that for a long time, and when they actually did it, it was just as amazing as I thought it would be. Um, it's so much fun to play. So I just beat BTSX Episode 1 and 2, super, super hard, play them on Ultra Violence. And um, as I just wrapped that up, Doom Eternal came out. And I played Doom Eternal when it came out on PC, back at uh, the same time in March when Animal Crossing came out, 4K, 60 frames per second, keyboard and mouse. And I told myself that I wasn't gonna get it on the Switch because obviously I already have it and I'm not gonna spend $60 on it again uh, like I did with Doom 2016, but here we are. So the thing that kind of motivated me to uh, buy it again and do this and make this video is, and, and this has always been the case, it's just particularly bad with Doom, I watch people playing this game, trying to you know demonstrate performance or whatever it is that they want to demonstrate, and they're playing it so poorly. I mean, it's an embarrassment. It's like a freight train that's trying to go off-roading. It is this clunky, just horribly controlled uh, space marine that's supposed to just be grace and vicious energy and speed and he's none of those things. And nobody seems to notice or care how poorly they're doing on controlling this thing. It makes me infuriated just to watch them, watch them struggle trying to hit an enemy, trying to turn a corner properly. So I said, I know, even without playing the game on the Switch, I know that this can be done much better. And I know that there's a potential here that needs to be demonstrated, and that's why I'm here. So, um, that was kind of worth it to spend another $60 on it. Uh, so I bought it today, I downloaded it, I played some of it, and um, I'm going to go through a lot of the stuff that I uh, have already gone through on my own with you. Uh, we're going to cover every menu option, so you know what the menus are, um, all the controller configurations, all the way that you can configure controllers and what those mean. Some of the options are kind of vague. And then I'm going to go through and we're going to do uh, actual gameplay. And then there's a couple specific things that I want to talk about in terms of the best way to control or um, the best ways I found to play the game uh, with a pro controller or Joy-Cons. So uh, let's get started and let's get into the menu options. Tons of options, just like on the PC. Obviously not as many video options, but lots of them uh, in terms of everything else. Let's go through these real quick. For the game settings, you have your difficulty, glory kill highlight, tutorials, in-game tips, sentinel armor, which is you get sentinel armor if you're having a hard time beating a boss, empowered demons uh, will spawn during your campaign requires an internet connection, kind of vague if you don't know what any of that is. Um, I still don't know what that is. Uh, double dash input, so I can press it twice if I want to dash twice, or I can hold it to have it automatically dash twice for me. By default, it's on hold. Uh, so I set it to press, and then photo mode lets you take pictures. For the weapons, auto switch e weapon on empty, auto switch weapon new, classic weapon pose, which is the traditional, it's in the center of your screen, like in Doom 1 instead of off to the corner. Uh, weapon bob, and environmental screen shake. For UI, we have the color profile. Let's do exterminator. Uh, color profile, which is all these themes. Those are your options. Menu confirmation time. To find how long a, a button must be pressed for a single confirmation. I love these little things. I love these little tiny things where someone was like, let's make this UI feel really responsive, but let's also give them the option to tweak it. Like, It just shows a lot of thought. Heads up display. Um, you get to choose if you want all the stuff on or if you just want your crosshair only. Your opacity for your heads up display. Really good for TVs with burn-in. You turn that down a little bit to prevent burn-in. Crosshair style, you have full, dot, or none. 
presets. This is really neat. Depending on your play style, it'll turn on or off a predetermined list of these. So compass, key card stock, interaction prompts, boss health bar, objective markers, corruption meter, blood punch gauge, active runes, dash, weapon info, health armor, equipment, power-ups, extra lives. There's so much here that it's neat that they give you the opportunity to turn some of them off. Notifications, uh, center notifications, you can decide whether you want to put them in the in the middle. I don't know where they go if they're if that's turned off. Side notifications on, in menu notifications, update, weapon refill numbers, health, armor pickups, doom level increase, mission challenges, and speakers. Here's speakers names on the heads up display. And then accessibility. Now the accessibility stuff has its own tab, which we'll get to at the end. It's really interesting how they uh, categorize those options. So controls, these are my controls. We're using the Pro Controller right now. Uh, horizontal sensitivity, I found 75 to be good. Vertical, a little bit less. Um, just because it's a stick and you don't want it. Unlike Battlefield 1, there's no options here to kind of mitigate and take out um, the uh, game to try to understand whether or not you accidentally are hitting up and down. You just have horizontal and then you have vertical and then you have a threshold in between of like, he probably didn't mean to go up and down, so we're just going to leave that out. This doesn't have that. So instead, what you get is uh, you just set your own sensitivities. Invert look. I play with it on. Customize Slayer controller and Demon controller. So uh, because you play as the Slayer or the Demon, they give you these options to customize them on an individual basis. We're going to look at them after this, uh, after we go through this menu. Vibration on, aim assist on, aim assist strength. Target snapping. This is a kind of a Call of Duty type thing where you get close, you know, ish to the enemy and then the, en the weapon that can zoom in. Um, snaps right to it. Not a lot of those weapons in Doom, so it's interesting that they have this option. Looks smoothing. Uh, I have it turned all the way down to zero, so this is you know how much it kind of ramps up as you're holding the stick to get to full speed, and I just like it off. Motion aiming on. It's off by default, and you get these new options once you turn it on. So motion aiming stick override is if I'm using the stick, don't use the um, gyro. Uh, originally I had that on because I kind of like that option, but I find myself sometimes trying to use both and especially when I'm like rotating to the left and then I just need to look up a little bit. So I've turned it off so that I can use both just fine uh, at the same time. It's not distracting to me. Uh, motion horizontal sensitivity is maxed out. Vertical turned down just a little bit. Uh, motion invert horizontal and invert, invert vertical. So. This is one of my pet peeves with other games. They won't make a distinction between the sticks inversion and the gyros inversion. So when you see specific options for the gyro inverter, you know that you're in good hands and that it's not going to be an issue. Um, so let's go up here to customize the controller. So you always get the graphic of the switch. You don't get the detached Joy-Con graphic. You don't get the pro controller graphic. Um, which is fine because you have all the same buttons. If you're going to edit it, well, first of all, you have all of these defaults that you can go through at any time. But then custom, if you right click or you click on the right stick, uh, rather than uh, clicking a button and then or an action and then choosing what button it goes to, you essentially swap roles. So if I want chainsaw, which is Y, to be on B, I just select it and move it. And this is a really clean, interesting way to do it. It means that you can't have duplicates. It means that uh, everything, every possibility that you can possibly have is already here. But if that's the case, which it clearly is here, it's a neat thing to just grab one and just move it to a new location. Very clean, makes a lot of sense. I actually really like this interface for that. Um, and as you can see here, these are the, uh, there's a lot of controls in the PC version. It looks like they've mapped most of them here. Um, I think they might have mapped all of them. Uh, usually I attach this stuff to my gaming mouse, which has a bunch of buttons on it. So it's nice to see that they were able to put it all here. Um, I don't like switching uh, my weapon mod. Let's actually change that. So I don't like switching my weapon mod with up on the D-pad because that's my moving thumb and it sucks to stop moving to change my mod in the middle of the map. With the way that I have this configured, I have the B button doing nothing. So 
let's grab that and let's move it over to the B button. Now real quick, I wanna go over the way that I have this customized and why I have it customized. Obviously you can skip this if you're, you know how you wanna customize your own. So uh, weapon mod, left trigger, you know, kind of like secondary fire. Equipment launcher, so you have your uh, equipment which is over your shoulder, typically like the grenade. Um, so this is like the secondary kind of attack, these fingers. Then you have the left stick move and left click jump. And the reason I do that is so that I can keep moving and my right thumb is free to look while I'm jumping. So I can jump backwards away from enemies. I can jump and turn. Jumping doesn't mean that I have to stop turning or, or um, moving. I can do both. And then I have nothing set to up on the D-pad. Switch equipment. So uh, this is like I have my equipment launcher and later on I'll get different kinds of grenades. So this is how I would switch that, which again, I don't like it being down here because I, I like to switch my equipment on the fly when I'm fighting, but if it's here, I gotta stop moving. So I'll see if I can uh, figure that out later. Mission information, fine on the D-pad. I can stop and do that crucible. I don't know how that's gonna be. Again, I don't know how much I'm gonna be pulling that out uh, during movement. And then on the right side, I have fire weapon, which is basic, and then switch weapon is on this button. So this is like my primary weapon, you know, section of the controller. I can hold it to bring up the weapon wheel and then use the stick. Um, and then I have my flame belch as X, which means I have to get off of the turning, but because I have gyro, it's not that big of an issue. I can use my gyro to aim, use my left stick to move, use X for flame belch. Same with the chainsaw. Um, dash, I've moved to A, which again, I'm compromising the ability to turn, but thanks to gyro, it's not a problem. If I didn't have gyro, this would be an issue. So it's not just helpful in aiming. The way that I can get to consider my controls, it helps a lot because I'm able to um, you know, not have my thumb on the turn button. Uh, switch weapon mod, I've moved that down to here, so I can be running and switch my weapon mod with the B button, that's gonna be fine. Then right stick is look, and then clicking the right stick is my melee glory kill. Now, so it's interesting that there's always gonna be one button that's not used. And I would have thought that they would have needed every single one of these buttons, but I guess not. Uh, I click on NA, select another button to swap actions with, there's nothing that can be done. Okay, so those are my controls. That's fine. Uh, demons, you know, Archvile, Mancubus, Marauder, Pain Elemental, Revenant. You can choose any one of these, and then you have individual <laughs> controls for each, which is really cool. That's really neat. And, of course, at the end of all of them, you can, you can customize them. And that's important for Deathmatch, because that's what it's kind of, you know, the whole thing is built off of. Okay, so those are the controls uh, video. Gamma, film grain, loot drop brightness, and then colorblind rendering. No field of view, which is a bummer. I'm sitting very close to a 50 inch 4K TV and increased field of view helps a lot, but it's the Switch and that's gonna be more intense on the Switch, so um, you don't get that option. Audio, speakers, headphones, levels for everything, Slayer, pain grunts, opponent hit notification sound when you're in deathmatch, subtitles, uh, where you want the <laughs> where you want the speaker's name to be uh, subtitle background on or off subtitle font size uh, voice chat and voice chat volume awesome so those are the options then they give you the accessibility which is a collection of gameplay UI controls video and you can see it's the same menu layout at the top but it's all brought into one uh, separate menu. So we've seen all of these options before. It's just neat that they're all in here. So those are the settings. So now let's talk about Joy-Cons because something interesting happens. So first of all, uh, I pair my Joy-Cons and I don't have the irritating thing come up that says push L and R on your controller and press A. It just somehow works just fine. But if I go into settings now, and now I go into controls, I have three new options. Precision sensitivity, precision delay time, and precision transition time. Now, they don't do a good job explaining what any of these are. So I'm gonna tell you what they are. 
So what this is, is it's a way to mitigate the crappy sticks on the Joy-Cons. Because of your grip, and because of how small they are, and just the way they're built, these are not nearly as good as the Pro Controller sticks. And that means that, and your hand, you know, relationship to them also sucks. And that means it's very difficult to play a first person shooter like this, right? So what they're doing here is they're trying to give you a way to uh, create a window in which uh, your control settings are dampened. So let's say, for instance, um, I have turn speed of, let's call it 100, right? Maxed out. Uh, according to this, I have precision sensitivity, which is at 50, which means <clears throat> during this, what we'll call the precision window, the first moments of when you try to turn, we're going to cut your controller sensitivity by 50%. Then precision delay time, after a certain amount of time, in my case, it, this is milliseconds, which I also don't tell you, 100, after 100 milliseconds, we're done. Now you get to inherit your actual settings of full controller speed. And then the transition time is how long does it take to jump from your precision mode, which is really just slowed down main control settings, to your main control settings. And so what this does is it makes it so you can have, say, very uh, fast controls, but when you're just turning a corner or doing some quick flicks, you're on the controller for such a brief amount of time that that's almost like a different control sensitivity. So it's time-based control stick turning sensitivity, which they call precision. So these three options allow me to say in this first window of time, how much do I want my controller sensitivity to be reduced? How long do I want it to last? And then how quickly do I transition into my full speed controller stick settings? These are mine. So I'm saying precision sensitivity is 50, which means if I have horizontal set of 75, it's gonna be half of that for 100 milliseconds. And then after the 100 milliseconds, I have a zero for transition time go right into my full speed. And what this does, it lets me build muscle memory of flicking the stick for fine aim and flicking the stick to turn corners is slower and more precise than holding it, at which point I'm able to turn around quickly or I'm able to you know, spin or whatever it is. Real interesting. Okay, so we're gonna do a gyro test. Um, a lot of games give you options for how the gyro works. This one doesn't, which is kind of a bummer. It also doesn't give you options for control stick, dead zone, or um, you know a couple other things. So you really got to hope that they got a lot of it right, and in my opinion, they did. But it is still a shame that there's a lack of options in a couple areas. One of those areas is how the gyros are uh, calculated, pitch, or yaw, or roll. Um, for Doom, rotating like a steering wheel is how it rotates left and right. Forward and back, goes up and down. Moving it, goes left and right as well. What doesn't work for left and right is this. This doesn't turn you left and right. So let's do a quick test. Uh, we'll call it steering wheel controls for Doom. And I'm going to center myself and just hold still. There it goes. So it is detecting no input. Let's steer to the right left. I mean, I'm barely moving and it's picking it up. It's doing such a good job, but if I keep moving, like I keep, I'm moving right now, it can't keep up. And I am, I have rotated my hand. Let me, let me show you, make sure that I got this. So let's center ourselves. Okay. So we come to a stop and I'm rotating my hand and you can see it loses it. I'm still moving. Poor thing is just completely lost right now. And that's one of the that's one of the, you know, things you got to deal with because they're filtering out the data. It's just a bunch of data and it's up to them to make it so that it's not noisy and not stupid. But if I move even slightly faster than that, everything's fine. So it's just that tiny tiny precision. And you know what I would have liked? 
I would have liked a precision mode for the gyro. That would have been awesome because then I could just hold a button and my gyro movements just become, I can exaggerate them like this so the sensor picks it up, but my movements are very tiny and I could just track an enemy across the screen because I'm holding the precision button. But there are no precision options for the gyro or the pro controller. So steering wheel mode and up and down. That's basically how you're going to be doing the gyro on the pro controller. I kind of want to change these controls. Let's see what it's like to have dash be on the right stick. Dash, right stick. So now melee is A. So now I have all my navigation on the sticks. Everything navigation wise happens on the sticks. It feels really good. Yeah, that feels great. Okay, now we're going to talk about the Joy-Cons. So the Joy-Cons uh, have a couple of issues. One, everything feels cramped um, and tight, and the control sticks aren't nearly as reliable as um, you know, you'd know you like them to be. So like we talked about in the options menu before, there's a lot of things that they did to mitigate this um, in terms of kind of having multiple levels of sensitivity for your control sticks. and uh, I really like playing with detached Joy-Cons for the gyro in games, typically when it's done well, but it's always hampered by these stupid sticks. So this game does a number of things great in that regard, and it feels like a great experience. 
but there's one really interesting solution that I think is, I'm pretty, well, I'm certain is accidental in this game that solves my biggest problem. So when you're using the Pro Controller, you have access to your right stick the entire time. You're always using it. It's completely comfortable. This means that even if you don't know it, you're constantly course correcting for the drift inside the gyro. Because you try to avoid the thumbstick on this because it's uncomfortable, you're relying on the gyro and you inherit a lot of the problems of the drift a lot more than you would on the normal controller, on the Pro Controller. And some games have a reset button, so you're able to push the button and it resets your view. And what you're supposed to do is rest your wrist back in your home position, you know, in your comfortable position, then press it. A little clunky because you end up looking at the ground for a second and then resetting. What I prefer is like a mute button where I can hold it down and it just stops listening to the gyro. I can put my hand where I need to, release, boom, everything's fine. I'm not looking everywhere while I'm trying to get my hands into back into their home position. Well, there's no option for either of those. But because of the nature of Doom Eternal, during a glory kill, neither the gyro nor the sticks do anything. So that is the moment that I have to reset and rest. And it happens so often that I can reset and rest regularly. And it's you barely have to think about it because you're constantly wanting to rest. Because when it drifts, your hand ends up being like over here somewhere. You end up spending a lot of effort like doing this. So you're always wanting to go down here and during the glory kills, this is the perfect time. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to play and I'll call out any time that I'm resetting, which means that I'm in a glory kill and I'm putting my hands down. Okay, let's see what we can do with just gyros. Rest. 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 Near you. Sure. Rest. Oh, 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 it's beautiful. Look at that. Just snap right to it, just by muscle memory. So, I mean, I would love to play this on the Switch with these controls at 60 frames per second. I'd love to play it at 120 frames per second, but... That's not gonna happen with the Switch. So in conclusion, this is uh, absolutely wonderful. The way that they were able to implement controls into a game that's running at 30 frames per second and to get gyro and the sticks 
and even the Joy-Cons feeling so good is a real testament. And I, I think it's uh, it really needs to be recognized in addition to the fact that they got, even got the game running on the Switch at all. Um, so some pros and cons regarding controls. The pros, it's snappy and responsive. The stick feels great, even though there's not a lot of options to tweak the stick. It, they nailed it. It feels wonderful. The gyro was implemented wonderfully. Um, again, limited options there, but um, they knew what they were doing, and it feels really, really good. The customizable controls, um, they get big, big bonus points for letting you customize your controls. And also the UI for customizing your controls is really, really good. Just the idea of, here's your controller, I'm going to grab a command and just drop it on a button is very straightforward and works great. There are also great control options, uh, namely the precision mode of the Joy-Cons and the options that are there for stick sensitivity, acceleration, all of those are welcome and uh, they have good ranges where I'm able to crank them up and uh, you know I'm not even hitting the ceiling on my turn speed. I can still go up a whole other 25 units. So great options there and they have appropriate inversion options which is awesome so they make a distinction between stick inversion and gyro inversion which some games don't which makes it unplayable to me but of course they've nailed it here some of the cons of the game uh, the nature of 30 frames per second just naturally gives you less responsive controls and considering that this is at 30 frames per second again they've done a tremendous job but it would be twice as responsive if it was at 60 it's on the switch so i can't expect that uh, there's a lack of dead zone options. I really like tuning the dead zone on my control stick so that I can have a really, really fine grain control over uh, how much pressure needs to be applied to the stick before it moves. There isn't any of that. There's no individual controller mapping per controller, so I might want to change the configuration of buttons on the Joy-Con, for instance, because um, it feels cramped or I feel like I'm going to drop the controller if I shift my fingers around. But they don't stay based on controller. They carry over their universal. I would have liked to see my Pro layout and my Joy-Con layout be different. Um, there's a poor explanation of the Joy-Con specific precision mode. They don't mention that it's in percentages. They don't e express that it's in milliseconds. They don't express what precision mode is. You just have to mess around with it and pay attention to try to find out what they're talking about. Um, there's a lack of gyro input type, roll, pitch, and yaw. The implementation they have, is, again, is great, but to be able to have those options would have been nice to tell it what kind of movement does what um, with your turning. And there's a lack of advanced gyro settings and things like uh, resetting your view or muting the gyro. Um, but really, that's it's kind of nitpicking. Uh, overall, this has been just an amazing experience. I think they did a tremendous job bringing it over to the Switch. and hats off to everyone responsible especially for the controller implementation on the switch you did a absolutely wonderful job so yeah that's it thanks for watching uh definitely pick up doom eternal on the switch and use gyro controls uh if it's not something you normally use i'm telling you i'm telling you, you, you now's the time to get used to it because you just cannot control like this um without them thanks